church, we love God. Make no mistake about that. At our church, we believe Jesus is God. We're not asking you to change your belief system before you attend our church. We're simply inviting you on a journey toward Jesus. We believe that prayer moves the hand of God, and it's normal for every believer to be intimate with God and devoted to His cause. At our church, we believe the Bible is God's Word. It's real, it's living, and it's active. We believe freedom is the heart of God for every believer, and we value humor, simplicity, teamwork, and a positive outlook on life. At our church, we're about developing great relationships with God, each other, and those in our community. At our church, we believe that Jesus really lived, that he really died on the cross, and that he really rose again on the third day. And we cannot and will not water down or candy coat that message, ever. And finally, and most importantly, at our church, we're not concerned about where you've been, but where you're going. We believe that all people matter to God, and therefore matter to us. Today, you have chosen to sit yourself in the middle of a very safe place to hear a potentially life-changing message. Welcome to our church. Oh, Sunday, sorry. Every third Sunday, we have prayer breakfast before service. So be, be sure. The next one is November the 16th at 9.30. And uh, November birthdays are going to be Bruce Kenny. How, how do you say, is it Kenny? I, I, call say, I say Kenny, but do you Kenny? know even people in my own family pronounce it differently? Okay. It's Kenny. It's Kenny. 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 It's probably in German, it's really Kenny. Because it has the little, I don't know, mark over the O. And oh. In German, you know, if my ancestors had been smart enough to know the English, <laughs> the English translation, they would have made it king and saved us all. Yeah. Time, you know, problem. Uh, but that's what it means in German. Uh, anyway, come, mm -hmm. Kenny, I say, but I, I answered a lot of things. <laughs> okay. Uh, just not late for supper? Yeah, not late for supper. Or, or yes, dear. <laughs> yes, dear. Whatever you say, dear. Uh, and Jim Moore. Uh, we want to wish you a happy birthday. And uh, Barb puts these little funnies on here, and I think they're, <laughs> they're nice little uh, chuckles anyway. But um, I want to welcome our visitors here today, you know. Good to have you. Yeah, yeah. Feel free to worship any way you want to worship. Uh, we're free here. And uh, Bruce is going to be bringing the message this morning. So I look forward to seeing or hearing what he has to say or what the Holy Spirit has to say from yeah. him. And don't forget our but even now from last week's message. Yeah. If you want to catch that again, you can get on the Lord's Table.net. Um, and click on media, and you can get the messages from there. Uh, we try to keep them updated, but I get behind sometimes, and then I put a whole bunch on there at once. So. <laughs> really great message. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, well, the Holy Spirit gave that to me. Yeah. He's mm -hmm. given me another one, but I, I have to. Uh, you know, it, it took a little bit longer, so I'm going to have Bruce. That's why I asked Bruce to preach this morning. I just felt like it, God had something to speak through him, so we're going to welcome that. But anyway, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you, Lord, for this morning. We want to thank you for our visitors, Father God. Yes. Lord, we want to keep a, a, a focused prayer on those who aren't here, Lord, and lift up Diane and Larry to you, Father God, and and, Lord, I uh, lift up Richard and Diana to you, that, uh, Lord, you just continue to touch your body. I believe he's healed right now. Yes. I just believe that, decree, and declare it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Father, I just ask that you would open our ears to hear and that you'd open our eyes to see the wonderful and mighty things that our Savior does. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. You know, I've seen a mighty, uh, mighty army of warriors on horses mm -hmm. in the clouds. And I see that the storms are rising within mm -hmm. your life. And you think, where are you, Lord? Where are you, Lord? Mm -hmm. And the Lord says to look up because you have an army that is coming to you. That's you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Don't, don't try to do things in your own self. Depend on him, rely on him, rely on him. 
rely on Him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, I, uh, Bruce this morning asked me to, you may be seated. Bruce this morning asked me to, if, about a song named Rescue. And I had no idea in that song that it talked about a mighty army. But it was funny because I was seeing the message. I was seeing the army up there come to the rescue of his children and crying out to him. And then the song came on and I'm like, <laughs> that's just like the Holy Spirit is put things Amen. together like that. Amen. And, and I, I, it just tells me that but even now, yes. but even now, you know, you stand on the faith and have trust in God. He's coming to the rescue of whoever. He's coming to the rescue of this church. He's coming to the rescue of your children. He's coming to the rescue of your loved ones. Right. Yes, he is. Call them in to the kingdom of God. Keep calling them in to the kingdom of God. Just like, just like Jesus called Lazarus out of that tomb. Call me into the kingdom. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the mighty name, God. It always amazes me how God coordinates the music, the worship, and the message. And you know, like I told I said many times, I said we never discuss what I'm preaching or what she's playing for music or anything. And yet, Amazingly, it all comes together, and it's not a, mm -hmm. it's a miracle, but it's not a surprise. Mm -hmm. We should expect miracles in our lives. Yeah. Uh, that song we just, we just uh, sang, uh, you know, I will trust in you. I will trust mm -hmm. you. Let's pray. Dear Father God, we thank you for this ability to come together, together, to meet together, and to share with each other and to encourage, encourage each other in the Word. Your Word says that we should come together to build each other up in the Word, to give each other confidence, to minister to one another. In order to do that is we go out every day in our everyday lives to minister to those around us, mm -hmm. to show them Jesus. And we just praise Him and thank You. May You bless this reading of Your Word. May the words that come out of my mouth be mm -hmm. truthful. May they be of your word, that they're in agreement with them. And may the ears they hear it receive from this message and go out strengthened and full of faith in your yeah. word and in you, Jesus. We praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 I have to share with you, Roxanne, when she texted me last night, she said, uh, can you preach tomorrow? And I first I texted her back and I said, yeah, I can do that. She said, well, I didn't know if God had laid anything on your heart or not. <laughs> oh, Roxanne. <laughs> it's been a pretty rough week, and yes, he's been teaching me some things, you know. And I've been trying to listen and learn, and you know, it's stuff, that, it's stuff that I know, but I'm not practicing. You know, we read it, we say we know it, but uh, we're still walking according to the old flesh. The flesh is strong. A lot of times, you know, we get back into that habit. Well, this week, you know, most of you know that last spring, uh, my wife was uh, T-boning in our car, and, and uh, it, was a, it was a good old car. It was an old car. It was getting rusty, but needed replaced. But, you know, the van we have is 20 years old. It needs replaced more than the car did. My plan was, was to replace the van, and we would keep the car for me to drive back and forth to work and get a better vehicle. Yeah, that's not the way it worked out. We, uh... Still have the old van, I'm driving back and forth, it's a good old girl. She rattles and bangs, but she starts every morning and gets me there and back, you know. So, I praise the Lord for it. Been times I've had things that wouldn't start, and wouldn't rattle and bang, and wouldn't get down the road. So, you know, like I say, but this last week, our new car, I went out and pulled a dipstick on it, and had foam all over the dipstick. I don't know if most of you know what that means, but I knew what it meant immediately because I'm a mechanic. Yeah. There's water in the oil. <laughs> There's coolant in the oil, and it doesn't belong there, and that's not a good thing. And I'm like, ah. So we took it to the mechanic that works on our car usually. And he said, well, maybe a head gas. And that's what was in the back of my mind, too. Uh -huh. and he said, uh, I said, well, what's that going to cost? He said, it's probably going to cost 1200 bucks. Yeah. You know, by the yeah. time I get it replaced and everything, you know. And I'm like, ah. 
Well, we bought this car used, and it's, it's a really nice car, but it's used quite a bit of oil. And I haven't been happy with that, but... And I told Jackie, I said, well, you know, if we're going to spend 1200 bucks on a head gasket, maybe we ought to see what it costs to put a rebuilt engine in it. Because it's probably a good car. We're going to have more in it than it's worth, but uh, with a bad motor in it, it's not worth much either. You know, it's one of those deals where it ain't good either way, but we got to do something. And kind of worried about that and everything, you know. And I prayed to God. I said, God, you know, I pray to find a way to get through this and everything. So finances, you know, we've never had a lot of money and we've always, like I say, praise the Lord, we've always had plenty. Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. But I was hoping before I retire, I'm 62 next month, and I'm not going to retire right away, but I was hoping that I need my house needs some remodeling, needs some siding, needs a new roof. It needs some doors and windows and stuff like that, like old houses do, you know. I was hoping to get that done before I retire. And um, like I say, just some things, and I'm thinking, well, here goes another four or five thousand dollars, you know, if I go put another motor in that vehicle. And I'm praying to God, I said, you know, God, I believe you're in charge of all things. Mm -hmm. Jackie called me and she said, well, he said it would cost forty two hundred dollars if he had to put a motor in it. So I texted her back. Joy, joy, joy. God can't buy. Mm -hmm. God's in charge of this. Yeah. I don't need to fear. The Bible says, fear not. You know, we talked a little bit about that last, mm -hmm. that last week. Uh, Roxanne's message. You know, because kind of thing. Paul was, wasn't married that came out to see Jesus after Lazarus died. What was her name? Martha. Martha. Martha came out said, Jesus, he died, and if he would have been here, he wouldn't have died. But even now, <laughs> yeah. whatever you yeah. say right. will be. Yeah, that's the word. Yeah. And I was thinking about it. And the reason I wrote her joy, joy, joy was in James, the first chapter, chapter 1. Verse 1, I'm going to start with verse 1, even though my message is really starts with two. James, the bond servant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greetings. My brother, count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Mm -hmm. That's why I said that. Joy, joy, joy. <laughs> we got a trial. Count it joy. We're going to learn something here. Yeah. <laughs> if we listen, if we'll open yeah. up our ears and listen, if we understand God's in charge. Amen. God can't lie. He's given me his promises, his word. He can't lie. And that's why I sent her that text. Joy, joy, joy. God can't lie. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's kind of, you know, I don't know how this is going to work out, Lord, but I know you're in charge. Mm -hmm. And you know, some of my friends at work said, well, Need to button the back up and just take it and trade it off. And that's all that crossed my mind. The place was working. Yeah. I'm like, do I really want to pass this car that's got a problem on to somebody else to let them have the same problem? That's what the world does. Yeah. Yeah. Get rid of that piece of junk. Let somebody else work. I've seen I've seen those young guys at work, they'll buy a pickup truck or something, you know, and it, boy, it's not what they don't love. It's got some problems. So they get online, on the phone, they find somebody in eastern Ohio that wants to trade with. Get that truck out of this country, trade it to somebody I don't know and I'm never going to see it again. <laughs> the guy asked him, can you drive it over there? Oh yeah. So they load it up on a trailer. <laughs> they haul it was in five miles of where they're going to trade it off. And they unload it off that trailer and they drive it to that guy's house. Oh my goodness. But you know what? That thing they traded for is just as big a piece of junk as that thing that they traded it all. And see, that's why I know that my God says not to do that. And I'm going around in my mind, well, if it takes $4,200 to put another motor in there, God's in charge of my finances. He makes that little bit go a long ways. 
Or he takes that ox and dumps it down the rat hole like that. Yeah. He's in charge. That's right. Bible says the Lord is the one that makes me prosperous. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yep. And it also says, what have you gained if you have all this money if you lost your soul? Yeah. Yeah. So what am I worried about? He also said the most given commandment in the Bible, fear not. Mm -hmm. That's right. Fear not. And I'm sitting here stewing over what am I going to do with this yeah. car. And that's why I said joy, joy, joy. Things aren't going the way I had planned. You know, I look at the Bible. And all the great men in the Bible that the Bible talks about. You know, Joseph saw all these brothers bowing down to him, but you think when they threw him in that well and then sold him to the slave traders, you know, things were going the way he had planned. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You think that's the way Joseph had it planned? Uh -uh. Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> you think Daniel, when he was obedient to God, and he went in and prayed the way that he did every day, and they saw he broke the law that they made and they threw him into the lions. He thinks that's the way he had it planned. Mm -hmm. What about David when Samuel anointed him as king, but he had to wait all those years with Solomon chasing or with Saul chasing him around trying to kill him? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. It's not the way he saw it when Samuel anointed him with that oil and said, You're going to be the king of Israel. See, they had to persevere. They had to get yeah. through yeah. something. Right. The word persevere, the first half of it is per, means through. You know, yeah. If you say somebody, this is per so and so, well, that, it's through them. The last part of it's severe. You've got to go through something severe. Mm -hmm. You've got to persevere. You've got to get through it. That's right. Uh -huh. But while you're going through it, you got to understand who's in charge. You know, usually we have to persevere because we tried to do it ourselves. Amen. If we'd have done it the way God said and had faith in Him instead of taking That's it on right. ourselves yeah. to jump out in front of Him yeah. and do it ourselves, we wouldn't have had to persevere. We have to persevere, go through something severe because we may have even known what He called us to. About Abraham. He knew what God had promised him. He's going to have a child. That's right. He even told him he was going to have a child with Sarah. Mm -hmm. But when it didn't happen right away, and they got tired of having some patience, mm -hmm. one of the fruits of the Spirit, by the way, mm -hmm. didn't let the Spirit have his way, yeah. they decided, well, maybe he would have a child with Hagar. Maybe that worked. Mm -hmm. That's not what God said. But he took it on, they took it on themselves to try it their way. Didn't work. Then they really had to persevere a while. They had to wait a while longer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Moses, I believe Moses knew that he was called to lead the children out of Israel. Mm -hmm. yeah. He killed the Egyptian slave. He was going to protect those people. He was going to take care of them. That's not the way I'm in charge, not you. I'm going to use you, but you're going to do what I say. Yeah. And when you go back in there to Pharaoh, you're going to tell him what I say. You're going to bring the things I give you to put on him. You're not going to do them yeah. by your hand. It's going to be done by my hand. Right on. That's right. Come on. So, he had to persevere 40 years being a shepherd. Before God called him again to go back and get that people out of Egypt. And you know what? When he brought them out of Egypt, took them across the Red Sea, God opened that Red Sea up for them, and they didn't believe. Guess mm what? -hmm. Uh, Forty more years. <laughs> they had to persevere because they didn't believe. They didn't believe. And you know, have you ever wondered, and I look at my own life, sometimes I think I'm just as stupid and disobedient and faithless as those Israelites when they came out of Egypt. How in the world could they see all the plagues that God laid on Egypt? 
Could they walk through the Red Sea that God had parted, seen all the miracles God had done, and still not believe? Yeah. You know, the Bible says that the, the gospel was preached to them just like you and me, but they didn't mix it with faith, so it did them no good. That's right. And yet, sometimes I still fall back into the old fleshly man. I'm yeah, going to get it yeah. done. I'm going to work 60, 70 hours a week. I'm going to get that house fixed up. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And he said, what? What, what do you say? Fine. 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 Yeah. Yeah. No, God, you're in charge. You're in charge. Mm -hmm. I don't think he means for us to sit on our duff and do nothing. He didn't tell Moses to sit back and pray for those people in Israel and I'll get them out of there. He said, you go get them, but I'm going to give you the power. Mm -hmm. You know, the Bible says that same resurrection power that raised exactly Jesus right. from the dead yes. lives in you yes. and me, yes. believers. Yes. That's yes. the word. And yes. yet, somehow, some way, in our fleshly mm -hmm. mind, mm -hmm. we are still trying to get her down mm -hmm. our way. Yeah. That's what's wrong with this nation. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. We think we're going to elect somebody and put them in office, and they're going to go in there with fleshly power. And straighten this nation out. Uh -huh. yeah. We have the power to straighten this nation out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we need <clears throat> to walk according. But we need to give glory to the one that's giving us the power. Right mm -hmm. We need to know who's in charge. Yes. And we need to say to Satan, get out of here. You know, the Bible says, submit yourself to God and resist the devil, and he must flee. Mm -hmm. You know, but Satan has so much control over this nation right now, but you know what? And we're trying to fight it in the flesh. The Bible says our battles aren't fleshly battles, they're spiritual battles. That's exactly right. Yeah. We fight them with the Word of God. That's right. Mm -hmm. It says the Word is our sword. It's yes. an offensive yeah. and defensive sword, both. It says it's a shield of faith. Quenches every fiery dart. Every one. Not just most of them. And you know, I know most Christians know this, and yet for some reason, they don't use it, they don't do it. And I think a lot of them, you know, we went through a phase, I remember growing up, and I wasn't even a Christian at the time, I went through it sometimes, but I'd never given my life to the Lord. Tried to read the Bible, made absolutely no sense. I didn't understand it's a spiritual book written by spiritual people, poor spiritual people. When the fleshly mind tries to read this book, it sees a lot of inconsistencies, a lot of contradictions. It doesn't make any sense out of it. That's why it says the Holy Spirit has to teach you. You know, there are theologians that don't understand the Bible because they don't allow the Holy Spirit to. Uh, they try to understand it with their flesh and mind. The Bible yeah. says that God's wisdom is foolishness to man, and man's wisdom is foolishness to God. Yeah. You know, until we ask that Holy Spirit to teach us His Word, to bring it in our hearts, to fill us with it, we'll never understand it. But like I said, that this Word has everything that we need in our life, not only for our personal life. For our nation, for everything. Growing up in the 70s and 80s, I heard a lot of the Pentecostal movement was really strong at that time. You know, people made fun of them, you know, because they said, well, they grab it and grab it, name it and claim it. There was a lot of truth to that. But a lot of them didn't see what they were grabbing and they didn't see what they were grabbing. You know why? Leave with your heart. Confess with your mouth. You can't confess it and not have it here. Yeah. It doesn't work. you got to believe it. If you say to that mountain, be cast into the sea, and don't doubt, it shall be done. But you know, if you just say, get in there, mountain. It's not going to happen if you don't believe it, if you don't walk according to it. You know, the Bible says, faith without works is dead. You know, I can say I have faith, but if I'm not living accordingly, mm -hmm. yeah. that's not going to be good. Uh -huh. yeah. well, I believe that word. Uh -huh. 
you know, I, I see so many people put faith in so much in their hands and their work and their, you know, finances and their doctors, whatever. And I'm not, I'm not putting doctors down. I'm not against doctors. What I know is doctors don't know everything. Right. Doctors do the best they can. They know what they were taught. And unfortunately, you know, they're taught whatever big pharma wants them to know. There's a lot of things out there that are yeah. very powerful in health and healing that doctors don't know. We believe the latest science they don't know. You know, for years we've known there's vitamins and minerals, fatty acids you've got to have and your body can't provide. You know that there's carbohydrates your body's got to have or you don't survive. Most doctors don't know that, but it's written in Harper's Biochemistry. The big thick book about that thick, they got to study to be a doctor. <laughs> Far, big Pharma knows that. That's why the IU Med Center's got $5 million wrapped up in a glycobiology ward that they're studying, trying to figure out how this works in your body. But we, what they know is if you give that to your body, it can do miraculous things in healing. But they don't want to give it to your body to see you heal. They want to control the profits off of it. See, your body can't live without vitamin C. Back in the old days, sailors went out to the ocean, stayed out to the ocean about three months, and they started dropping like flies. Yeah, scurvy. Scurvy. Vitamin C. Yeah. Captain Cook, a British sailor, figured out if I feed them different things or rotate them on a different diet, they don't start, they don't die after three months. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And what he figured out was the diet that he rotated them on included vines. Vitamin C. Mm -hmm. You know, the British, that Navy for 50 years had an advantage over all the other navies in the world. They could stay out to sea more than three months. That's why the, that's why the British sailors were always called limeys. They ate limes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know what? The doctors rejected this theory that Captain Cook had for 50 years that it's, scurvy's not a dreaded disease, it's a deficiency. You die from it because you don't have vitamin C. But you know what the learned people of the time did? They rejected it. It's a disease. It's not a deficient thing. Mm -hmm. That's why I say I, I'm not against doctors. I go to a doctor. I got some new teeth last year from a dentist. <laughs> I'm not saying anything against doctors, but you know when you go to the doctor with a health issue and he treats you, understand who's still in charge of your healing. Yes, right. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And go to Romans 4. You know, eh, let, me finish, let me finish reading. Let me finish reading James here. Let me start with James 2. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. We're counting the joy, so we're, we're getting more patience. Not something I really wanted, but you know, the Bible says it's a good thing. It's a fruit of the Spirit. We need to have patience. Let your patience have its perfect work so that you may be. Perfect and complete, lacking nothing. Lacking what? Lacking what? Nothing. Okay. Nothing. I don't know about you, but I've lacked a lot of things in my lifetime, but still there's some things I wish I had or I don't feel like I'm lacking. God's been really good to me. He had blessed me. But see, God blesses us, and a lot of times we just kind of take it for granted. We've got to have patience. I looked at my wife back there, and she's been pronounced dead twice. Mm -hmm. Doctor told her, told us four years ago, Thanksgiving, that she wouldn't live to Christmas. Doctors don't know everything. Right. God does. Right. <laughs> Well, God does. Yeah. Doctor went out to tell her mom and dad that she was dead. The nurse came out screaming behind the doctor. Ah, she's not dead. So they put the blanket over her head. <laughs> she does. She started breathing again. Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. Praise. Oh. See, that's what I say. God's in charge. That's I don't know when we're going to get right. that through our brain, you know. Yeah. It says... You lack, it says he gives you any, everything, lacking nothing. 
If any of you lacks wisdom, let him go to God who gives liberty and without reproach, and it will be given to him. You know it says that my people die for a lack of wisdom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if you need wisdom, ask God. It says he'll give it to you. He's not stingy. He loves you. He wants you to have it. He just wants you to ask him. He wants you to understand who's in charge. It says, but let him ask in faith, not doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Let that man uh, suppose that he will receive anything. Let him not suppose that he will receive anything for the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all big ways. And see, that's where, that's where most of us get in trouble, myself included. Because so many times I have a plan about how I'm going to do this, how I am going to do this. And I don't think there's anything wrong with having a plan. And I don't believe there's anything wrong in having faith in what God said. I believe Abraham had faith in what God said, but when he got tired of waiting, he thought, well, maybe this is what God meant. I'm going to help him out. No, well, let's help him out a little. Maybe, that's what God, maybe he didn't really mean Sarah would have a son. Maybe he meant I would have a son with Abraham. <laughs> It's not happening. I'm not seeing it happen. You know, how many times have you been praying for something and you're yeah, like, yeah. I'm not seeing it happen. Mm -hmm. I'm still feeling pretty bad. I'm still pretty sick. You know, I've got to place any more. I mean, some people think I'm a little bit slack in the head sometimes. I think work from these guys to work with. But you know, if I have an ache or a pain, when I feel that ache in my back, thank you, Jesus, for my healing. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus, for my healing. Do I still have pain in my back? Yeah. Not today, I don't. But, I mean, when I'm saying that, thank you, Jesus, for my healing. Yes, See, because the Bible says we walk by faith. Not by sight. And I think it would be better said if we walk not by uh, any of our six senses. Mm -hmm. Our sight, our hearing, mm -hmm. our feelings. Because, so, see, our feelings are flesh. Mm -hmm. But I'm spiritual. And I have this old flesh that body that's imperfect. Let me tell you something else. The Bible says it's appointed for man to die in the judgment. And I, I believe that's true. I can't lie. It's true. Unless Jesus comes in my lifetime, this, this flesh will die. But I've already passed from death into life when I was born again. My spirit doesn't die. In fact, I was dead in the spirit before I was born again. But now I move from death into life. That's right. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. He was talking about, they're already dead. They haven't followed me. They're not following me. They're dead anyway. So let your dead bury the dead. You don't need to go bury your father. I always thought that was a cool saying. I really understood what he was saying. And they're all dead. They're not following me. Let them bury the dead. But here's what I was going to tell you. Pointed for man to die then the judgment. And understand that's not the great white from judgment. That is the judgment seat of Christ for us believers. The great white from judgment is only for those that are not saved. Because it says they are judged according to their works. You and I are not judged <coughs> according to our works. We're judged according to Jesus Christ's works. I have the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. And every sin has been taken away. There, there's no, there, there's no, how do I want to say it? There's no charge against me. That's what Satan would like. Yeah. Come on now. That's what Satan would like, when there would be a charge against me. But the Bible says that my sin has been cast as far as the east is from the west, and, and God remembers it no more. Yeah. You know, if there's not a charge against me, I don't have to go in front of the judge. I don't go to court. 
But here's what it's going to tell you. It's pointed for man to die in the judgment. Judgment seat of Christ is where we receive our rewards. It's the Bema seat if you look up the, the original language, and that's where they gave rewards to the athletes after they did after they had competed in the Olympics, where Caesar set up all these platform and it gave you rewards. And that's what the Bema seat was. And that's what it talked about. The judgment, the judgment seat of Christ is a Bema. I may have to die is what I was going to say because it's appointed by God. I don't have to be sick to die. Because you know the Bible says and I believe the Bible is the word of God and God's Amen. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Psalms 91. Let's just see what the Bible says. Psalms 91. One I need to just read every now and then to encourage myself and to know what God has. Well, yeah. Let's just get them kind of through it and read some of these verses and see what it says. Then let's read it. Verse 1. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. I always... I always thought of fowler, you know, fowl. Chickens are fowls. It's a person that takes care of birds. You know what the word fowler means if you look it up in Strong's Concordance? It's a person that, it's something, it's a, somebody that snares. Mm -hmm. The fowler is somebody that snares things, that sets traps mm -hmm. for things. You know who that is? That's what Satan is talking about there. He says, I will deliver you from the snare, the trap of the one that sets traps, Satan. And from perilous pestilence. Pestilence is disease. Mm -hmm. And it says, He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. Have you ever seen a mother hen yeah. take care of her chicks? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make any difference what comes after. I don't care what the grizzly bear. They ain't getting her chicks. They're going to have to take her first. Mm -hmm. He says, you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by the day. Any of you ever wake up at night, middle of the night, start thinking about some problems you're having or some things that go on? You know, yeah. some of the things that are just bothering you. Uh -huh. You lay there and you, your mind starts playing it over. How am I going to take care of this? What am I going to do? I'm going to tell you a little secret I do anymore, and usually I go back to sleep with him about five minutes. Thank you, Jesus, for all yeah. you've given me. Jesus, you're so good to me. I love you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I just start praising him over and over again. And pretty soon this morning, because I felt like yeah, I see yeah. I'm giving it all to him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not going to sit here and stew. Your word says, fear not. I'm not doing that anymore. Satan, get out of here. I know who's in charge, who takes care of me, who loves me, who's promised me. Uh -huh. Don't go there with me, Satan. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Satan, you know what? You're going to end up in that bottomless pit forever and ever and ever more. You want to try to worry me? Let me, under, let me let you understand where you're going and what's going, who's going to throw you in there and who has the key to that bottomless pit. Mm -hmm. So if you wake up in the night, just remember I told you this. Amen. Remember what the Word says. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I just start thanking you, Jesus, and I start thinking about the reasons I need to be thankful. Uh -huh. Amen. And usually, it's pretty quick, I'm back to sleep. Yep. I'm resting like I'm supposed to be. I'm yep. not going to be all tired and drug out the next day because I was worried about something. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Goes on, and he says, Nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday, a thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. I'm a child of God. That's right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. My God. Thank the Lord. Will take care of me. Yeah. Says he hears the cry of the righteous. He does. 
Understand, you've got to be saved. You've got to be born again for him to hear your cry. It says he doesn't listen to the wicked. And on your efforts, yeah. on your fleshly efforts, the Bible says, the flesh is an enmity with God and cannot please God. Mm-hmm. You can't please, please God by your works unless you're in Christ. You have the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. living in you. He says, because, and he says, and with your eyes you shall look and see the reward of the wicked. Because... You have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even most mm-hmm. high in your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Get out of here, you old disease. Nora always tells me about how she's never been sick. I know why, Nora. <laughs> I know why you've never been sick. You have faith. Right. You know who's in charge. He shall give his angels charge over you. True. Mm-hmm. You ever walked out of a place and feel like sickness just following you? Yeah. Feel like the demons are around you. Like hair stains on the back. Yeah. I've done that. And I was walking out of Bible study. Yeah. <laughs> I'm serious. New foundations. Uh-huh. There was a spirit in that basement. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Give me the angels charge over there. You better get out of here, Satan, because these angels I've got all around me are protecting me, and they're going to run you up. They're going to beat you like a dog. <laughs> the way it is. You know, what I know is Jesus has already taken the authority. I just have mm-hmm. to believe it. That's right. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. That's what we got It says, in their hands they shall bear you up as you dash your foot against the stone. Remember when Satan told Jesus, took him up on the high place, jump off of here if you're the son of God. It says, the angel will catch you as you dash your feet on the stone. Satan said it's written. Satan knows the word of God. Yeah. It's written. Throw yourself off of here. The angel will catch you. Show everybody who you are. It's also written, you shall not test the Lord your God. See, we don't go out there and do things, stupid things that test, see if God's going to take care of us. Right. We know he will, but we're not tested. Right. Mm-hmm. It says, you shall bear on, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, and the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. It's that lion that goes around roaring, seeking who he might destroy. The serpent Talk to Eve into trying the forbidden fruit. He was saying, we are triumphing over Satan. That's what he's telling us there in that passage. Mm-hmm. You have the authority to trample over Satan. Yes, amen. Come on. Thank you. Yeah. But see, we don't believe it a lot of times, or we don't t- exercise that authority. Mm-hmm. Says, but and God says, but because he has set his love upon me, because we have set our love upon the Lord. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. Mm-hmm. He shall call upon me and I will deliver him, he says. I will be with him in trouble. I del- will deliver him and honor him with long life and satisfy him and show him my salvation. See, We are that double-minded man so many times because we say, oh, I know God's going to take care of me. Then we turn around and try to take care of it ourselves. Hey, that didn't work. God didn't take care of me. I'm, I'm still sick. And it's like, I still got this issue. With... Ever heard the verse, wait upon the Lord? Mm-hmm. Do not doubt. Keep confessing. That's right. Mm-hmm. Keep confessing. Yeah. You know, I, I think it's interesting. People seem to believe, most Christians seem to believe that we're saved, that we have salvation, that we're going to heaven. You know, but in Romans, where it talks about that, in Romans, I think it's chapter 9, verse 10, or verse 10, chapter 9, I'm kind of dyslexic sometimes. Believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. You shall be saved. You know what? 
That's how we get everything from God. You believe in your heart. Confess with your mouth. If you say to this mountain, be cast into the sea and do not doubt. You can't get anything from God other than through faith. Not faith, but first it has to be in the heart. You know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart. So, first thing we got is, and you know what it says? It says mm -hmm. that the word, the word. It says, how do you believe unless a preacher tells you? You know, unless somebody tells you. Unless somebody speaks it into you. Somebody speaks it into you. And it goes around and it goes around and it's implanted in the heart. You know, the, the parable of the sower. He's not talking about wheat or corn. It works for wheat or corn. He's talking about the word. It's implanted. It grows. You nourish it. You cultivate it. He asked the Lord, you know, it says my favorite verse, Romans 5.5. 5, Hope doesn't disappoint, but God fills our hearts with love, agape, unconditional love, godly love. God fills our hearts through the Holy Spirit whom he's given us. You know, and he says, love everybody. Well, I mean, they love the brethren. It doesn't say love the brethren. It says love everybody. Now, there is, there's a couple passages that say love the brethren, and that's where they get it. We just have to love the church people, not the outside people. No. While you were yet sinners, Christ died for you. That's how much he loved you before you came to the church. That's the way we're supposed to do, too. Amen. You say, well, he's unlovable. That's when you say, Holy Spirit, fill my heart with love. Give me love for that person. Show me how to love them. Yes. Uh -huh. They don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yes. Why would they do anything you say or believe anything you say if you don't have love for them, if you don't That's care right. for them? Holy Spirit just wants to teach us so much and understand that He's in constant control. He lives in you. We are the dwelling place of God. That's right. We don't have to put up with this monkey shine Satan wants to dump all over us all the time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Hmm? I like to hear the What could my head do to me? See, the Bible says in Revelation, we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Most people forget that part of that verse. And we do not love our lives unto death. Mm -hmm. I may die, but you know what? I'm going to a better place. Yeah. I'm not worried about it. I hope it don't hurt too bad. <laughs> but you know, I don't because I really don't know what that transition's like, but I just know I'm going from one place to another. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. I'm not really too worried about dying. I know mm -hmm. I need to live my life the way God called me to. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting. Jesus didn't worry about dying. Mm -hmm. He overcame Satan with the word. Mm -hmm. And grass fades, a flower withers, but the word of the Lord endures forever. There's no stability in this in this world other than the word of God. Right. When you put your faith in the doctor, in your money, in your wife, your husband, your kids, I don't know wherever you put your faith in. The sun coming up, there's no there's no stability other than the word of God. And you need to get that in your head and never forget it. When you're going up against a battle, just start praising the Lord and knowing that He's in charge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, this week's kind of taught me, you know, mm had -hmm. some things go wrong, I kind of thought. Car's backing up and running, you know, by the way, it didn't really cost as much to get it fixed. I hope it is fixed, but I know that if it isn't, you know, God's in charge. I'm not going to get too excited about it. See, whenever you come up against a trial, you need to just count joy and know that it's going to work out. God's in charge. In fact, 
Sometimes we have to walk around a few days wondering how it's going to work out. Yeah. But we yeah. just have to say, God, I believe you. I trust you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the passage is, you know, some people say, well, you just read Old Testament. Promises and read. Think about this promise. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in Christ for it. Thank you, Lord. That's New Testament. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's the New Testament I should say. Christ didn't quit doing his miracles just because the New Testament came into effect. Dear Father God, I thank you and praise you for these people that were here today, each and every one. I pray that your blessings yes. would go out upon them. I pray that they would trust in you yes. and know that you are in charge of all things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Help us to know that we have power in us, living in us, the Holy Spirit. The Word of God. We need to remember the Word of God. We need to know the Word of God. Jesus fought his battles. It is written. It is written. It is written. So us do the same and have faith that you love us and that you will take care of us and each and every need we have and that you hear our cry when we cry out to you. We praise you and thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Bruce, before we dismiss, I'd like